my, uh, my research has been on um, observational astronomy, in particular uh, galaxy profile. Now, before we left, you guys heard Aaron's speech, which is actually going to be very important to me because I'm going to be constantly referring to Aaron's uh, talk. Because a lot of the stuff she did complements the stuff I did. And so I'm going to uh, continually refer to that. So um, ast astronomers, as you see, are uh, always obsessed with the heavens, right? And so with this obsession of the heavens um, arise three natural questions, right? Who are we, where do we come from, and where are we going? And so in order for these questions to be effective, we have to know like, where we are, right? So we have to have uh, some kind of like a perspective of, of uh, like the home. So we live on Earth, as this should be uh, pretty familiar to us, right? And so we orbit the sun, which in turn orbits the Milky Way. It's about two-thirds out. We're in one of the uh, spiral arms of the Milky Way. And, uh, and um, this is the Milky Way, and also uh, the Milky Way is a part of the local group, which is also a part of the Virgo supercluster. Okay? And so, um, well, we, we actually have a hard time uh, making uh, measurements of the uh, Milky Way because we are in one of the spiral arms, and so we have all this uh, disturbance, like galactic disturbance, which uh, basically pro prohibits us to make really um, effective measurements. So what we do is we actually look out to other to the galaxies in the region and make measurements about them, and we can use those to infer things about our galaxy. And so, um, um, right, and so, um, so and, and by doing that, we also get a good, like, uh, a, like a good understanding of our galactic neighborhood. All right? Okay, so there are two main types of galaxies. There are elliptical and there are spiral uh, galaxies. Spiral, spiral galaxies um, have the uh, have like spiral shapes, like spiral arms, right? And the elliptical galaxies are missing those spiral arms. And these are the names. These are actually the three galaxies. The three galaxies I studied, right? So these are the actual images over five nights, which have been uh, compiled together. Like, and so this is um, UGC one one two four one. This is MG, MCG seven thirty one four. This is NGC four four two eight. Um, I'm going to start referring to them by their supernovae. Every one of these galaxies has a supernova in, in, in it, right? So um, um, the supernovas are SN 2008 BW, which I talked about, SN 2008 BX, which she also talked about, and SN 2008 CE. And uh, um, there are two ways of actually getting distances to these galaxies. Uh, actually, I should say distances to astronomical objects. One is parallax motion. The other one is to actually look for these supernovas and use the difference in their magnitudes to actually calculate distance. That is precisely what Aaron was doing. Um, so if we look at these three uh, galaxies, right, we see that there's a supernova here, right, and then the, these are um, stars in the Milky Way. So the supernova here is actually, uh, I'll actually come back to this, it's somewhere in the nucleus, I believe. And, and this one in 2008 CE is here, and these are stars of the Milky Way. Um, okay, let me go on to the next one. So. This is uh, the Crab Nebula. This is an image of a, an exploded supernova, a supernova rather, which is an exploded star. And what we what we do is after the explosion, we you know we, we look for galaxies who have the supernova, which I showed earlier, the ones that I did. And so what we do is we measure the uh, the uh, like absolute magnitude, well the magnitude rather, over uh, a certain amount of days, right? And so we take the magnitudes, right? We chart these magnitudes, and then we take the difference, right? And they all line up on this standard line, standard candle curve, and um, this can be used to calculate distance um, using the distance modulus, as Aaron was talking to you guys about, right? And so that way we can get distances, distances to these galaxies. Uh, and the group was basically split into one part that I actually did this uh, using the supernova, the supernova profile, and uh, got the distances to the galaxies. I myself did uh, galactic profile and make measurements, astronomical measurements on the galaxies themselves. So, okay, so my research project, okay. So I had to think about some really, really clever tricks to try to figure out um, a good way to uh, make some astronomical observations, uh, measurements on these galaxies. So the ones I did were BW and BX, the ones in red. The one in CE I looked at, but um, my partner actually did this. And I bring this up because it was actually an important uh, concept which I will point out in just a minute. So for BW, um, th these are actually uh, like contours, which give you a um, like a potential photon distribution, right? So the um, the photons in these uh, contours are all equipotential. 
All right. So what we do is we get these vector potentials, and then you see, well, if you zoom in, you can see that these, uh, in, near the nucleus of the galaxy, you have something that is elliptical. And when you have something that is elliptical, that basically indicates that that is a semi-major axis. So you can just make a bar, right? You get the angle, and then you can rotate this thing, right, just like that, to, to be facing you right on. In this way, it'll be uh, much easier for, you, for one to make um, app, uh, like, um, intensity measurements, right? And so what I, uh, let me go on to this one. So here's BX, right? And this, the, uh, Here's what the X looks like. It looks like an elliptical galaxy, right? If you do some change, uh, some playing around with the contrast, these are contrasts, right? So there, there's nothing really to indicate there. They're just contrasts. So if you play with the contrast, you get something that is elliptical, and then something that uh, it doesn't show really well here, but something that like uh, resembles spiral arms. So what I think this is is it is an elliptical galaxy, which is actually um, colliding with a spiral galaxy, and so I think. The supernova has to be inside of this, um, inside of this elliptical galaxy. Some people in the class were talking about that this is the supernova itself, but if you look at other examples, the supernova, although it is as bright, and it can outshine us. One minute. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, and so um, it cannot. Okay. Uh, let me just then. Let me just go on to my next slide. Okay. Right. So here are the uh, surface brightness equations that, um, that I used. Basically, I have intensity in the center, intensity, intensity in the center, intensity um, away from the radius. So using this, I got the um, uh, uh, like the thickness of the galaxy, right? Because I've measured all the other parameters, and I've gotten the magnitude uh, at zero point flux. With, and uh, I can use this, which gives me a linear relationship, right? Now I can plot the magnitude as a function of radius and make a um, measurement of the profile. And so here my, my errors come from the magnitude, zero flux, and the uh, me measurement from the, the intensities. Okay. And here are my graphs. Okay. Here are the error bars. The error bars are between 2.5 and 1.5, 1.7 magnitude, which are incredibly large, as Aaron mentioned before. Um, and just a quick sanity check, as you move up from the center of the galaxy, um, you get a lower intensity. So a higher number here, um, uh, it correlates to lower intensity. So these are moving out from the center of, on the axis of these galaxies. And this is the uh, uh, magnitude that you move out from the center of this galaxy. Right. And, um, so uh, my research comes out to be um, uh, correct. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, register on something called Simbad object, uh, Simbad catalog. And so uh, that has nothing to do with me. It's just called it Simbad catalog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, if future astronomers want to do like uh, look at that galaxy, they can already have uh, get a galactic profile. So if you guys are interested in in uh, some internships in astronomy, here's the website you want to look for. And uh, you can also see Professor Crystal Martin and Professor Tim Brown, people I've been collaborating with, and 